Good evening, everyone, and welcome in to the One Play Sports Spectrum. We've got a special treat for you today because it's the first ever episode of The Legend Show. A great innovation from those good people at WFL, World Football Legends. Now, usually throughout the year, they're organising these great stadium events where they bring the football superstars of yesteryear around Asia to take part in some fabulous <coughs> exhibition matches. They stop the traffic wherever they go. But, of course, COVID-19 has put pay to sporting calendars all over the world and WFL are no exceptions but they've put their heads together and they come up with this great concept of the Legends Club which gives you so many benefits to become a member. It's just for 15 US dollars a year do you get to get priority access into the Legends show and your chance to ask your favourite Legends a question on the broadcast. There are also 200 member meet and greets planned in your home country when international travel is back to normal as well as all expenses paid trips to see EPL games alongside a legend. Imagine that, you can be at an EPL game sitting next to a bonu fide legend. There's also home chats, we'll have this broadcast for you, the Legends show moving forward but there'll also be private at home chats with your legends available to you via Zoom and you get 10% discount on WFL partnered selected food and beverage merchants and you can check those out at the website which is www.thelegendsclub.asia and you get $10 off of WFL merchandise as well. And I'm sure the benefits will keep on coming and it's a great way to build a community that involves your sporting heroes in this incredible tough time. So you can see, I think maybe you can see behind me now, we have a very, very busy Zoom wall. But before I introduce the first two legends that join us, here is a reminder of what they did on the pitch. Fleming takes it, Dowie comes short. Oh, it could go! Marvellous goal by Keith Gillespie! Four minutes gone. Second cap tonight for Keith Gillespie, the 19-year-old from Manchester United. And what a start for Northern Ireland. Striding away there with Hamilton to his right. Norman Whiteside up on the far side of the area. Still Billy Hamilton, he's got past Tendilio. And Arkham Armstrong! So with that said, we go to the wall of Zoom and say a very good, I think we're coming up to just past seven o'clock in the evening here in Singapore. It's early afternoon in the United Kingdom. We're crossing uh, to Northern Ireland to say good evening or good afternoon where they are to Keith Gillespie, the former Newcastle and Manchester United star and the one and only Jerry Armstrong. 149 international caps between them. Great to have you with us guys uh, here in Singapore. We're talking to you from, I'll come to you first, Jerry. Um, first things first, how are you doing? You're like the Peter Pan of football punditry. Every time I see you, you look, you look younger. I try to keep myself busy. Um, it's a little bit wet here in Northern Ireland at the moment. I'm not too far away from Keith, uh, but uh, there's not been any football played here um, in the domestic league uh, at the present, but their semi-finals are going to be played this weekend between uh, Coleraine and Valamina. That's one semi-final in Glen Torrent and Clipperville is the other semi-final. So we've got a little bit of football starting to come back into uh, the Irish League. But it's quite frustrating, I think, for everyone, fans and ex-players alike. Keith, I'll come to you now. Keith, I hope you are safe and well. Tell me, what have you been doing uh, to keep busy and keep fit with all these restrictions over the last couple of months? I think Jerry's been a little bit busier than me. He's a... <laughs> He's a bit of a get up and go person, a bit more than than what I am. But it's it's been tough. There's no doubt about that for everyone. Um, you know, I, I, I'm quite fortunate. At the minute I've got my kids over from England, I hadn't seen them in four months, so I'm enjoying sort of spending time with them. But you know, hopefully it's not long before we're back to back to more normality than you know what we've had. Yeah, I mean, it's great to hear from Jerry that at least you've got the Cup semi-finals coming back in Northern Ireland. But everyone was getting excited for the return of the uh, Premier League. Obviously, it's come back. They've almost rattled through the games just to try and get through them. But it's not the same, is it? You're not enjoying the games. Tell me you're not enjoying the games as much as before this all happened. No, no absolutely, absolutely not. not. Um, it's, you know, I, th I think... Um, you know, when you watch games, I mean, players react to the adulation and when they don't get that, you know, it's a big difference. And I, I've sort of been watching games and I sort of think if, if this game was 4-4, you know, it still wouldn't have me on the edge of my seats. Whereas obviously with the crowd being there, you know, 
that obviously helps. But you know, I don't know how long it's going to be until we're we're, we're back to normality with the uh, with the football side of things in terms of the crowd. But um, you know, football needs uh, needs uh, people there. Yeah, you know, I, I think that's you know perfectly you know clear now. So hopefully, it won't be too long before that happens. Yeah, I think key spot on there, Jerry. I mean, I've been working on the J League, doing some English language commentary on the J League. They've started letting five thousand supporters back into Japanese games. And get this, you know how polite the Japanese are. They're only allowed to applaud. They can't cheer. And they've been doing it as well. They've only been uh, clapping politely. But it's not the same, Jerry. I know how passionate you are. And it's a far cry from your heyday, Jerry. I remember when there was only one substitute. Now it's drinks breaks, five substitutes, three substitute breaks. It's football, but not as we know it, is it? No, it's too commercialised for me. It's starting bit like American football. They're going to have four quarters. You know, hopefully at the end of the season... They'll get rid of the, the the water break, which you don't need, not in the, the climate we've got. We don't need water breaks. Get it back to what it was. And um, I, I have to say, hearken you not, know, I'm actually applauding and, and shouting when I'm commentating on games. Yeah. So you've got you've got to get into it. And I, I can't really envisage football without an audience. The Irish Football Association have told me that in September, when they've got some games, they're hoping to have a third of the capacity. But that hasn't been rectified yet, so we'll keep our fingers crossed. OK, there's a bit of noise in our Zoom there. Just like to remind everyone who's watching, we've got great to have so many Legends Club members with us. But if you can just keep yourselves on mute, we'll be bringing those members in for a special Q&A with Keith and Jerry in the second segment of the show. I'll stick with you, Joe, for the next one, because I don't know how passionate, like Keith, you are about Northern Irish football. Quick word on Ian Barraclough taken over from Michael O'Neill because, um, I mean, it's, they've gone for continuity, haven't they? But is that an a, a appointment that you applaud? Yeah, it's a, an easy appointment for the Irish Football Association because he was the under-21 manager. He's worked with Michael. Six or seven of the under-21 players have gone into the full squad recently and they know him very well. Um, it's another one from a money point of view. Um, he's an easy appointment because, um, you know, Michael was on a lot more money uh, as a manager and Ian's been slightly increased as wages wise. The other real candidate for me um, was the Motherwell manager and he obviously there would have been compensation had to be paid for, for him. So um, it's probably the easiest appointment for the, the Irish Football Association, but he's only got an 18 month contract. And I really do wish him well. He's a really nice guy and I think he'll do a good job. Yeah, tough act to follow with Michael O'Neill, isn't it? I mean, Keith, I'll, I'll come back to you now. Uh, Keith, you're obviously most famous for the stints at Manchester United and Newcastle. And I'm sure you're delighted, as Jerry is, to see so many fans joining the Legends Clubs uh, to interact with you. But what's your fondest footballing memory, Keith, when you go back through your back catalogue of uh, highlights in the Premier League? Yeah, I, I think as you mentioned there, you, you know, we're myself and Jerry, we're obviously very proud to play for Northern Ireland. Um, I know we're only a you know a small nation, and you know over the sort of years we do sort of you know overachieve at times. You know, you only have to look at what Jerry did in in, in Spain in '82, and you know I played. We beat uh, we beat a Spanish side. Also, we beat England. You know, so for for me. You know, I used to go to, to Windsor Park to watch um, Northern Ireland and I always wanted to play for my country. Um, and, you know, once would have been enough for me. I was lucky to do it 86 times. But, you know, that first time when you pull on that green shirt is is, is absolutely incredible. And I, I think everybody knows um, how good the Northern Ireland fans are throughout the world um, from from uh, what happened with the Euros. Um, so, you know, that was, uh, that was a big thrill. And I, I mean, I, I am a Man United fan. Um, so... To, to play for the club that I supported. I feel um, you know, very grateful that I was able to do that too. Yeah, and of course, Jerry, you can't talk about international football and Jerry Armstrong without talking about Spain in 1982. <laughs> Is it true you still haven't, haven't bought a drink in Belfast since 1982, Jerry? That's why I've moved home. It's great. <laughs> you don't have to buy any drinks. It's fantastic. <laughs> I mean, that was so no, uh, everybody remembers the goal, yeah. but um, they forget I scored more than the one goal. Um, there's a lot of goals that scored for Northern Ireland and uh, I always remember Keith's fabulous first goal against Austria the volley We've seen um, that. that was a sensational yeah. goal and put us 1-0 up and we actually went on to win that game 2-1 I was assistant manager at the time but um, there's lots of great moments in Irish football history the fact you qualify for a World Cup when you have a nation of 1.7 million but we did it three times in 1958 1982 and 1986 so um we have overachieved, as Keith said, and uh, the Euros was a fantastic occasion. I was thankfully there commentating on the games for the BBC. And um, 
it was great to watch the guys perform and they did so well. We always overachieve. We're that type of nation. Yeah, it's fantastic to see. And obviously emulating re recently what Jack Charlton did with the Republic uh, so famously <laughs> through the 90s. Now, listen, before we take our first quick break and get the members in for their own personal chance to chat with you guys, Jerry, I'll stick with you. Uh, this is a great initiative, isn't it? I'm sure you're delighted to be uh, teaming up with World Football Legends on this Legends Club because y yourself and Keith, you're there in Northern Ireland. You've got these Zoom opportunities with your fans. It's a great way in this modern age of keeping in touch because you get the feeling all this modern technology and Zooming and video calling, it's almost the new normal now, isn't it? Well, I never done Zoom calls until about four months ago, and now I'm doing probably four or five a week. But it's great. It is great to keep in touch and... Uh, you know, I'm doing a little show on a Thursday night uh, in, in, in the UK. Uh, well, worldwide it is as well. It's on YouTube and, and on Facebook. But, you know, it's Jerry and Friends, but I've had the likes of Glenn Hoddle and I've had Ozzy Ardiles on, World Cup winner. You know, we've had actors and actresses, singers, bands, Snow Patrol. I mean, it's great that you can actually use that. And I'm a little bit more attuned, but like you, I've got technicians who help me out. Yeah, and I'll tell you something. <laughs> I watched an episode of that. I very much enjoyed you. had Pat Jennings on there, didn't you, Big Pat? Yeah, he's going to be my guest tonight, Pat Jennings, who's our legendary goalkeeper, uh, world class he was, and 119 caps for Northern Ireland. He's my guest tonight on the show. And then afterwards, I've got Jim Jilton coming on. Yeah. And, you know, I have to have a word with Keith. Keith's going to come on the show for me as well in the next couple of weeks. I'm sure he will. And, of course, Pat Jennings, most famous for managing to go from Arsenal to Spurs and the other way round. And still everyone thinks he's the world's nicest guy. None of that Sol Campbell nonsense with Pat Jennings. <laughs> No, Pat, just he's a legendary man. He's a gentleman. He didn't really want to leave Tottenham, but he didn't have a lot of choice, you know, and uh, that comes out in the in the interview that I'll be doing with him oh. tonight. And he, to he told me something as well about, you know, I said, you know, you played at Wembley in the charity shield against uh, uh, Manchester United. And uh, I said, you scored that goal against Alex Stepney where, you know, from one goalkeeper kicking it from one end and it bounced over Alex Stepney into the net. And then he told me, he said, the game wasn't then, it wasn't at Wembley, it was actually at Old Trafford. So I learned something about that. Oh, good. Well, look, I'll keep an eye out for that on social media today. Jerry Armstrong, great to see him keeping himself busy. Keith is as well. And Keith and Jerry are staying with us, as well as all of our Legends Club members who have Zoomed in as part of their exclusive benefits of being club members. And when we come back in a couple of minutes after this short break, we'll thank our sponsors and then be back with our Legends Club members Q&A. Hi, it's Jerry Armstrong, and here's a great chance to follow me with the Legends Club. Hi, I'm John Beresford, and here's a great chance to follow me with the Legends Club. This is where memorable evenings are made. This is The Exchange. A versatile metropolitan space for casual meals, intimate groups and lavish events. This is a heady mix of panache and energy that brings every evening alive. This is where it's always buzzing. This is The Exchange. Hi everyone, I am Emmanuel Petit. Here's the great chance to follow me on the Legends Club. See you soon and take care. Bye. Hi everyone, this is Dwight Yo. 
This is a great chance to catch me with the Legends Club. Yeah, of course, must also remember to thank our sponsors back here live on the Legend Show on One Play Sports with our good friends at World Football Legends. And one of our great sponsors are the people at Pan Singh who make these wonderful match attacks. Um, Keith and Jerry, I know what I'm talking about here, the old swapsies from the school days. So I'm opening my match attack. I've got a free digital packet. How's that? The Liverpool midfielder Fabinho. Who else have I got here? Not too impressive. Never heard of this one. Marcelo, that's not bad. And finally, uh, Nelson Samido. I haven't had much luck, maybe you will, but thanks to Pan Singh and our friends at Match Attack for that. Right, as promised, this is what the Legends Club members have been looking forward to. Thanks to our sponsors and for Jerry Armstrong and Keith Gillespie for joining us live on Zoom today. We are now going to take questions from our members who've been given exclusive access to this Zoom call. And we'll start with Ravi Chandran Maributu. Ravi, are you there, my friend? Where are you calling from and who would you like to ask a question to? Are you there, Ravi? Can you hear me, Ravi? Yes, hi there. Hi, uh, Ravi. Hi, yes, I'm here. Where can you hear me? I can now, Hello? Ravi. Where are, you, where, are you, where are you speaking to us from? Um, I'm calling from Singapore. Brilliant. Close to us. And who would you like to speak to, Jerry, Keith or both? You could have a threesome with them. Uh, I, think, <laughs> I would like to speak to both, but my first question is for Jerry. For Jerry, okay, far away. Okay. All right. Hi, Jerry. Um, Hi, can you, to, can you describe to me the feeling of playing alongside George Best uh, for Northern Ireland? Uh, I understand it was your international debut. So how do you feel about it? Well, first and foremost, and Pete mentioned earlier, playing for your country is such a fantastic occasion. And I was one just chopped the bits that I was playing from a country against West Germany, who were the world champions at the time in 1977. And uh, when I found out that I was playing up front with George Best, who was my boyhood idol, it just made it a wee bit better, Abby, you know. So um, fantastic uh, uh, feeling and I really enjoyed the first hour of the game because it was <laughs> nil-nil for an hour. And then, then we conceded our first goal. And I think shortly after that, I was substituted. But it was a wonderful occasion, as you can imagine. Great Thank stuff. you, Jerry. Definitely a worthy experience. OK, um, my next question is for Keith. Far away, Ravi. All right. OK, Keith, uh, back in August 1995, if I got it right, there was reports that uh, you uh, approached my Sir Alex when you were in Newcastle to come back and replace Andre Konchelskis. Uh, was this true? And uh, were you actually thinking of returning? <laughs> yeah, um, you know, I'd, I'd obviously just left um, to go to Newcastle in January 1995, um, part of the, the Andy Cole deal at the time. And for me... Um, I wanted to get regular first team football and Andre Kanchelskis was in front of me at the time uh, but lo and behold six months later he he did leave the club um, and I remember sitting at home one day and uh, my phone rang and it was uh, Sir Alex um, asking would I come back um, so you don't turn Sir Alex down and he uh, he put a bit in uh, he rang Kevin Keegan he said leave it with me he rang Kevin Keegan he put a £4 million bid in to bring me back but Newcastle turned that down so it could have been uh, it could have been very different, but that 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 coincided then with because David Beckham was a central central midfielder, but they replaced him. They put him on the wing then, where he played on the right, and we all know what a what a fabulous career he went on to have. So it probably worked out for the better. Great stuff, Ravi. Thank you, Keith. Thanks so much, Ravi, for asking your question. Do stay with us. We'll enjoy your company and the rest of the Zoom. Let's move on to another uh, Legends Club member now, CC Zhang. CC, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hi, Cece. Where are you Hi. zooming in from? Where are you? 
Uh, I'm from China. I'm from the WFL China. Um, I'm a member. Oh, lovely. Uh, yeah. Whereabouts in China are you from? Because we're here today. They're stopping showing the Premier League in China now. That's terrible news. You have to keep up to date through the Legends Club rather than watching it on the television. Whereabouts in China are you speaking to us from? Oh, uh, well, I actually live in Singapore now. Okay, perfect. Even better. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Great. So you can Originally, still... I'm from China, yes. and uh, most of the time I stay in Shanghai, and um, I have some work in Beijing as well. Okay. Well, good job you're in Singapore. You can still watch the football. Who would you like to speak to, Keith or Jerry? Uh, I think I'll go for Keith first. I have a question about um, uh, Ch Chinese football. I want to know his opinion on Chinese football, and uh, if he knows any Chinese footballers, and what's the impressions on them? Yeah, um, to be fair, I, I, I don't get to see a lot of, um, you know, the Chinese league. Um, I know it's um, getting bigger and bigger all the time and you only have to look at the uh, the stars that um, have actually gone out there to play. Um, I, I did play with a, a Chinese player um, at Sheffield United, um, Sun Ji Hai, um, who I'm sure you would know, uh, absolutely lovely fella. Uh, didn't play too often when I, when I was there and I know he played at Man City before that, but... You know, I had the I had the pleasure of uh, of playing with him at um, at Sheffield United, and 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 as I, when I was at Sheffield United, they did have an affiliation with a club in uh, in China, which the name escapes me at the minute. And uh, we had sort of players that came over quite regularly, um, just to train with the club and stuff. So, um, but as you say, I, as I said, I, I don't know too much about uh, about the Chinese league. I'm, I'm sure Jerry uh, Jerry's knowledge of football is a, is a lot more expansive than mine, so I'm sure he probably uh, would be able to tell you a lot more about it. Well, let's bring Jerry in, Cece. I know you've got a question for Jerry as well, but before you ask Jerry your question, your thoughts on that Chinese football question, Jerry, because the, the Chinese Super League, huge sums of money have been invested, but the national team, surprisingly, has seemed to, seemed to regress as a result of all the foreign imports into China. Yeah, um, I, I look at it and I think, back to 20, 30 years ago, what the MLS was like. And I see it moving in the same direction. And you have to get the balance right in terms of developing your own players in China, as well as as well as well bringing in foreign players. But I would be bringing in foreign players who are not totally at the end of their career. I would be bringing them in in the middle of their career where they have a lot to offer and improve the league. So, um, and Keith Wright, I remember Sunji High playing uh, when he was at... Uh, uh, I think it was Manchester City and Lee TA is another one who played at Everton and I remember those two players were playing against each other in one game I was covering for ESPN about 15 years 10-15 years ago and the audience doubled because of, of their wow. participation all over Asia so those are the sort of players that you want to have heroes for the future there's one Japanese player I'm watching in the La Liga at the moment called Take Kubo and this is an 18 year old who plays at Mallorca on loan Obviously, Mallorca have been relegated, so they will be. He'll be going back to Real Madrid. I would expect that's his, his uh, club. But this guy, what a left foot! He's he, incredible. He's just like Lionel Messi going past people and shooting. He's fantastic. So there is wonderful talent in Asia, and it has to be encouraged. Yeah, Barcelona will be kicking themselves because they should have him, didn't they? But they broke the rules, and Real Madrid have snuck in and got him. Great stuff. Thanks for that, Jerry. As you know, Jerry, a proper global football encyclopedia. Cece, I think you had a question for Jerry as well. So let me come back to you, and you can ask your question that's specifically aimed at Jerry. Are you with us still, Cece? Ask Jerry a question, Cece. Have you, have you put yourself on mute? Okay. I think Cece just out of connection. Yeah. Oh, uh, we've got... Well, for, well, listen, I'll ask Cece's question for her, Jerry, because I've got it written down. Can I ask... A quick answer, Jerry. Can I ask a question for, 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 for Cece? Yeah, you sure? Who, who's that on the line? Who am I speaking to uh, there? Uh, my name's Alex Wei from China. Oh, well. thanks, Alex. Great. You could, you, yeah, you take over from CC, Alex. That's a nice day. You can tag in for uh, CC. Go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a question uh, from CC um, to to Gary. Yep. And um, what? Yeah, we thought about the uh, the Euro Cup this year and uh, what can England and Northern Ireland achieve, and who is the most likely to win the championship. Well, I mean, Northern Ireland haven't qualified yet. They've got playoffs coming up, and um, that's going to be difficult. And I've got my fingers crossed that Northern Ireland can uh, can do well in that, especially with a new manager. It's going to be difficult for him 
to get a couple of games in September ahead of the, the actual playoffs in October. So um, fingers crossed, Ian Barraclough and the, the squad can get to another Euro Championships. England have a much bigger and better squad than Northern Ireland always have done. So, you know, you, you would think that England will maybe go further in the competition. For us to qualify, I think even Keith will tell you, it's an achievement, no. believe you me. We're 1.7 million population. But if we can qualify, surely China and surely lots of other nations in Asia should be qualifying if they were organised properly and they had the right coaching schools and the right people in place to develop the talent and improve their league. Alex, have you got a question for Keith as well? Uh, yes. Far away. Yeah, uh, I got a got a question for Keith. Um, how, um, how how can I say this? What do you think of Newcastle team co take over at this moment? That's a Saudi yeah, idea. Um, <laughs> I, I'm uh, I'm hearing reports that um, that it maybe it's stalled a bit. Um, you know, I do a regular podcast a couple of times a week for for people in Newcastle, so we, we, we've had many a discussion about this. But I think in in terms of you know, Mike Ashley being, <clears throat> excuse me, being the owner. You know, there's been serious amount of talkovers the last the last few years, and nothing has happened. And you know, it, it just, it, you know, Newcastle people get excited, the fans get excited, and then it all falls flat again. Um, so for me, um, when I was speaking about it the other day, I said that the best thing to do is just not to get excited about it whatsoever. Once a once a deal is signed and the, and the, the takeover happens. Then you can start to to sort of celebrate, really, because I think with with the people who are trying to buy the club, there is uh, there's so much ambition at that club. That club could just go to you know a different level, and I, I know the club from being there for four years. Um, the fans are are absolutely incredible, um, you know, and it it is a it is a, a great place to play football. So hopefully, um, hopefully the the takeover happens sooner rather than later because the club deserves you know, a, a, an owner who's going to come in and, and try and move the club forward rather than just, you know, be sitting still where they are at the minute. Yeah, now now Liverpool have ended their Premier League hoodoo. It's about time Newcastle were challenging for a league title having <laughs> gone so close in the 90s. <laughs> Alex, great to speak to you, buddy. Many thanks for helping us out with CeCe's question as well. But let's rattle on so we get as many Legends Club members on as we can. Uh, Philip Sim, I think, is standing by. Philip, uh, where are you uh, dialing in from on Zoom and who would you like to ask a question to, Philip? Hello, hi. Uh, good afternoon, guys. So I, I'm from Singapore. So I have two questions for Key. Uh, Key, I'm, I'm a big fan of yours, and I I always thought that you left United far too early, right? Uh, <laughs> there was a deal that you know you were part of the deal to bring Andy Cole to United. So uh, I would like to know, uh, was that on your part? Was that a willing or reluctant leave for you to leave the club in in this manner? Uh, well, um, at the time I mentioned earlier, I had Andre Kanchelskis in front of me, uh, but um, there was a ruling in European football where you could only play sort of three foreigners, and they called this thing two assimilated players. And being from Northern Ireland, I was classified as as a foreigner. Um, so when you look at the the club at the time, when you've got people like Peter Schmeichel. Um, Eric Cantona, Roy Keane, Dennis Irwin, Kinchelskis, um, Mark Hughes, Brian McClure. You know, these are all regarded as foreign players. And what Alex Ferguson really needed was was English players and especially an English striker. So that's why he went for Andy Cole. Um, and when he, when he asked the question about Andy Cole, Kevin Keegan um, stated that the only way the deal was going to happen is if I was involved and went the other way. So... Um, I thought about it. Um, you know, it was tough. It was a tough decision. Um, it was my, my decision at the end of the day, and I, I felt that at 19 years of age, I wanted to to be playing regular football, and I was going to get that chance at at Newcastle. Um, so there was no uh, there was no pressure on me whatsoever. If I had to turn the deal down, Andy Cole would never have gone to Man United. Um, so I was uh, I was a big factor in the in in the deal, but. Um, you know, I have no regrets whatsoever. Um, obviously, I mentioned before I'm a Man United fan. Um, of course, I would have loved to stay there. You know, later, but I think I think in terms of going to Newcastle, um, I went at a, a fantastic time where, you know, we were challenging for for titles, and you know, just to work under somebody like Kevin Keegan was was an absolute dream for me too. 
Thanks, Philip. Another quick question for you, Philip. Make it a quick one if you don't mind, so we can rattle through some more members. You got another question, Philip? Yep. Uh, another one for Key. So during your time with Man United, there are four good uh, wingers, including you. So Key gets this, uh, Kanchowski, Lee Sharp, and Giggs. Who do you think is the best of all? Um, I, I, I think you got to go for Ryan Giggs. You know, the, the longevity, even that he had it at um, Manchester United, just absolutely incredible. Um, and, you know, there was sort of a, a period where you sort of thought he was on the decline. Um, and then, you know, all of a sudden he's, he's, he's you know, back playing regularly. You know, he wasn't sort of a regular at, at, at a period, you know, as he's getting sort of older. But, you know, to, to keep himself in shape and, and play at one of the biggest clubs in the world for, for the length of time that he did was was incredible. So, you know, obviously I've seen all three at close hand and all three um, were in you know, incredible players, but for me, you know, Ryan Giggs, um, Ryan Giggs edges it. Great. Thanks so much, Philip, for that. Let's move qu quickly on. We've got Mark Hickman now, uh, who's on the line, wants to ask a question. Mark, are you another Singaporean dialing in or are you in another part of the big bad world? Hi, uh, guys. No, I'm in Singapore. Lovely. Um, what would you like to speak I'm a, to? I'm a huge, huge Tottenham supporter, so I've got a question for Jerry. Sure. Far away. Um, so, Jerry, you obviously played with some amazing players at Tottenham. Um, who was the best and why? Well, you're right. Um, for me, Pat Jennings was a world-class goalkeeper. He was sensational, and I was gutted when he had to leave and go to Arsenal. Uh, but I have to tell you, Philip, I saw Glenn Hoddle at 16 and a half in the gym. I was training with him. Wow, what he could do with the ball, left foot, right foot. He was unbelievable. And um, I had him on my show a few weeks ago, and... He told me about keeping the ball up on the way to school and his skill and te technique and his dedication. Uh, Ozzy Ardiles, wor World Cup winner, Ricky Villa, you know, some fantastic players I've had to play alongside. But um, there's nobody, I think, that's going to beat Glenn Hall. He's got to be the best player I've seen at Spurs over the last 50 years. Great. So have you got another question, cool. Mark? Uh, yeah, quick one for Keith. Uh, Keith, I read that you um, you become a football agent, so... What made you become a football agent? And have you got any uh, promising players on, on your books? Yeah, I mean, it's something that I, that I fell into. Um, you know, I, I think being an ex-player, you, you can understand what um, what the player expects from an agent. And I had some uh, some not not too good affairs with agents that looked after me in the past. Fortunately, you know, the one that I got that I ended up with for, for sort of the the majority of my career was great to me, but previous to that, I had um, you know bad experiences. Um, so, you know, we we, we 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 sort of broker with a lot of clubs. Uh, we've got some young players that were uh, sort of new to the, you know, the role. Myself and the business partner, we've been doing it sort of three four years. So, we've got you know some some decent young players coming through. Um, you know, I think when you talk about agents, it's 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 not something where people you know, jump up and down about because, it, you know, people see it as a, you, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a profession that's, you know, a lot of skullduggery uh, goes on um, and a, a lot of things behind the doors. So we want to do things right. We want to bring players through in the right way because I think agents, you know, a lot of them are just after a quick buck and they don't know how to, to look after the players first and foremost. The, the players' needs are, are what's most important. You know, if, if there's a deal to happen, you know, you'll you'll get paid out of it, but I think a lot of agents, um, they, they they just turn up or speak to a player whenever a contract is is up for renewal or, re or they're ready to move. What you've got to do nowadays, you've got to build that relationship and build that trust with players, um, and that's something that we, we, you know, we really focus on. Great. Listen, Mark, thank you so much. That was Mark Hickman on the line. I've got one more name on my list, and let's try and get through everyone that wanted to ask a question. That's what we're all about here at the Legends Club. Jason Quick. Jason, are you with us? Yeah, I'm, I'm right. Yeah, sorry. So far away, Jason. No problem. We've got you back. Ask your question. Okay, um, my question is for Keith Gillespie. Okay. Um, I would like. To... Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, we can, buddy. Keith can hear you Hi, as Keith. well. Ask the question. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Keith. Um, I would like to ask. Um, was there any like um, regrets moving over to Newcastle? If you had continued to stay on at uh, um, Manchester United, considering that uh, Man U went on to win quite a number of uh, Premier League titles and um, FA Cups, as well as the European Cup in 1999. 
<laughs> of course, I would have loved to stay and, and, and been a part of that. Um, unfortunately, circumstances in football, you know, things can change very quickly. Um, I remember, um, you know, I, I played in a league game for Man United just after the turn of the year. And, and four days later, I was traveling away to Sheffield United, expecting to play again in an FA Cup game. By w Within sort of two, three hours, I, w I, was, I decided to leave the club. So, you know, that's how quickly things can sort of happen. You know, it just happened all of a sudden. Um, and as I mentioned before, I had the opportunity, opportunity to go to a, a club like Newcastle with a, with a great manager and Kevin Keegan. Um, and, you know, I, I think for, for myself and Jerry, you, you know, there's, there's obviously twists and turns in the roads in, in your career, um, you know, and at the time you just have to see it as it is and, and make that decision. And for me, um, I've no regrets whatsoever going to uh, going to Newcastle. Um, I had uh, four great years there. Um, two of them, we came second in the in the in the league, and possibly in 1995, we should have won the league, uh, which was very unfortunate. But um, no, I you know we're very fortunate, myself and Jerry, that we were able to sort of you know play the game of football. Uh, you know because there's so many people in this world that would love to have, have sort of you know, been there and done what we had done. So, you know, obviously Man United went on to win many, many trophies. And, you know, I was happy because I, w I was still a fan, but um, it would obviously have been nicer to be a part of that. Great answer and nice sentiments, Keith. And many thanks to you, Jason. Well, we've managed to get through all the questions, which is great. That's what, all, what we're all about at the Legends Club. And don't forget to go to www.thelegendsclub.asia if you want to find out how you can be a member and enjoy some wonderful benefits for just 15 US dollars a year. Must also thank our sponsors, our good friends at Match Attacks of Pan Singh, Nestia, which is a great app to get your information and news, the wonderful Exchange Bar. I'm sure Jerry Armstrong's been there on one of his visits to Singapore, the Exchange Bar by there in the CBD. A little League Soccer in Malaysia, the best place for young kids coaching uh, with the wonderful Andy and Paul Macefield there. And of course, our friends at World Football Legends. Our Zoomers, our member privileged Zoomers are staying with us. We hope you'll rejoin us in a couple of moments when Keith and Jerry will be giving us their predictions for the final round of Premier League matches this weekend. Oh, it could call. Marvellous goal by Keith Gillespie. Four minutes gone. Second cap tonight for Keith Gillespie, the 19-year-old from Manchester United. Hi, I'm Keith Gillespie. Here's a great chance to follow me with the Legends Club. Don Hutchison, here is a fantastic chance to follow me at the Legends Club. This is where memorable evenings are made. This is The Exchange. A versatile metropolitan space for casual meals, intimate groups, and lavish events. This is a heady mix of panache and energy that brings every evening alive. This is where it's always buzzing. This is The Exchange. They were. Here's Webber. Oh, lovely jink from Webber. Great feet from Webber. Webber into the bottom corner. And straight away at the start of this second half, it's Weber that slots it home. I am Danny Weber. Here's a great chance to follow me with the Legends Club. Hi everyone, I'm Teddy Sheridan. Hi, I'm Keith Gillespie. I am Emmanuel Petit. Hi, it's Jerry Armstrong. This is Dwight Yo. 
Hi, I'm Danny Murphy, and now is a great time to follow me at the Legends Club. Welcome back to The Legends Show, brought to you in conjunction with World Football Legends and our magnificent sponsors. Don't forget, if you want to become a member of The Legends Club, you too can be a part of this little intimate private television show, if you like, with a chance to put your questions to your favourite legends. There's other great benefits just for 15 US dollars a year. Go to England and watch an EPL game with a legend, and that'll be even more special when proper football comes back. We've already touched upon this rubbish COVID imitation. Uh, discounts at some great F&B outlets all across Southeast Asia, as well as discounts on your WFL merchandise. And 200, limited to 200 member meet and greets in your home country, wherever across Asia you are. And you'll know if you've kept in touch with the world football legends, when they can hold their real big live events, they certainly get around the region. Right, our Zoomers are staying with us because I think they've got their pens and pencils and papers at the ready because because Jerry and Keith are going to do their best to predict. I'm not going to put any pressure on you guys. I want at least nine out of ten correct score lines here. Uh, Jerry, <laughs> I'll start with you. One of your former clubs, Arsenal, up against Watford. This is one of the six games that's still got something riding on it. Uh, Watford need a miracle. Do they or don't they? Yeah, I think they've run out of miracles when they sacked the manager a couple of games ago. Um, Arsenal, I fancy to beat them, uh, especially home. Um, I'm going to go for Arsenal to win 2-1. Watford been disappointing for me and don't show an awful lot of team spirit at the moment. They're really down in the dumps. Well, I would so 2-1 to Arsenal. Well, I would say though, Jerry, if the top sort of half teams, Arsenal, at least you know you've got half a chance. They've been Jekyll and Hyde, haven't they? So at least you know you've got half a chance. They have been Jekyll and Hyde. Well, they might be thinking along the lines of the uh, FA Cup yeah. coming up and uh, that could be a considering and he might play a different team. I don't know. But um, Arsenal are a better team than Watford uh, all day long. Now, in my day, when we went to Arsenal, we beat them 4-1 and John Barnes scored a hat-trick. So that was at Highbury and that's when there was a crowd. So mm. that was a bit of a surprise. Maybe Watford can spring a surprise, but my, my, my money's going to go on Arsenal to so, win that one. Watford were a very different club in those days, weren't they? The Graham Taylor area. There would have been none of this stuff with the second yeah. managers in those days like the Pozos are doing there now, would they? Yeah, 100%. I mean, that the first year we were up in 1982-83 uh, season, everybody tipped us to get relegated and we actually finished runners-up to um, Liverpool, Liverpool yeah. that season. So that was a bit of a surprise for a lot of people. So I got a runners-up medal. That was the first ever season I went to a live game at Vicarage Yard. I remember that, Watford against Villa. Right, that's Jerry's going for the Arsenal. What about you, Keith? Arsenal or Watford for you in this one? No, I, I agree with Jerry. I can't really see Watford getting anything from the game. Um... I think Arsenal at home can, okay. can be very, very difficult. So, uh, but I'm going to go. I'm going to go for a uh, three-nil win for Arsenal. Three-nil, three-nil for you, Keith. Right, Burnley and Brighton. I'll stay with you, Keith, for this one. Burnley and Brighton. This is one of the few dead rubbers floating around. So, is it going to be a nil-nil? Players searching for the deck chairs, or is it going to be <laughs> gay abandoned and seven goals? I, I think if you look at what Burnley have done this season, it's been absolutely incredible. So I, I think, you know, they'll want to finish the high, as, as high as they can. Um, you know, it's it's been, you know, a similar this season to what uh, Sheffield United have had. You know, they're comfortably in the top half of the half of the league. So um, Brighton are safe now, as, as as we know. So, you know, not a lot, not an awful lot riding on the game. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to go for a low score game. I'm going to go Burnley 1. Uh, Brighton nil. One nil. And Jerry, your scoreline for that one? I've gone two nil. I agree with Keith. Burnley been brilliant at home, and uh, Brighton have got themselves in a position where they don't have any pressure. They'll go and make up the numbers, but I think it'll be 2-0 to Burnley. This joke will be lost on anyone apart from Jerry and myself, because I think Keith's too young to remember. This is a bit like that Jimmy Tarbuck game show. What do you guys do? We've got a difference of opinion here. <laughs> we haven't had a difference of opinion yet. Chelsea against Wolves. Jerry, your first stab at this one. Um, Chelsea, a lot on the game. And so have Wolves, I suppose, to a certain extent. But I'm going to go for Chelsea. They're good going forward. I watched them last night against Liverpool. Great. If you can go and score three goals in yeah. Anfield, but they concede five, not good. Um, so Chelsea to win 3-1, I've got in that game. OK, Keith, your scoreline for that one? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I've been very impressed with Wolves. So I think they're a fantastic side to watch. Chelsea have had, had a fantastic season as well. 
but I'm, I'm actually going to go for a draw. I'm going to go for a 2-2 draw. OK, 2-2 draw. High score and draw there. I'll right, stick with you, Keith. Palace against Spurs. Yeah, Palace have been very poor. I think they won their first game after after the restart. Um, I went Bournemouth, but since then, uh, I'm not even sure whether they've, they've actually scored. Um, I might be wrong on that, but um, Tottenham have done done well of late. Um, you know, I wouldn't sort of say that, you know, they're, they're that great to watch the minute under Mourinho, but um, I think I think Tottenham might be too strong for them. Harry Kane looks like he's, he's back in form again, so I'm going to go uh, Palace 1, Spurs 3. Another one of your former clubs, Jerry. Are you going with the Spurs to finish the season in style for Mourinho? I haven't got Spurs getting beat. I've gone for a 1-1 draw because Palace have been a little bit unfortunate. I mean, the game against Manchester United, you know, that there's so many decisions have gone against them and I think they're, they're due a little bit of good luck. So I think it'll finish a draw. Um, not an awful lot at stake for either club there. So I'm going to go for a score draw, 1-1. Yeah, they should have got a draw against Chelsea. They hit the post, didn't they, to make that 3-3 in the last kick of the game. And Everton, Bournemouth, Jerry, your first stand at this one. Yeah, well, Bournemouth, they're struggling and they need points, but I've gone for Everton to be victorious at home. I've gone for 2-1 for Everton. They're pretty decent at home and I think they'll just edge that one. Yeah, poor old Eddie Howe. It just goes to show how your stock can change so quickly in football. Uh, your prediction, Keith, Everton, Bournemouth? Um, yeah, I, I think Bournemouth have been quite unlucky of late. Um, I think they scored in the last minute against... Um, who was at Spurs when, and got disallowed. They equalised against uh, Southampton last week in the last minute, got uh, got disallowed with VAR. Um, I'm actually going to go, I, I think Everton are a little bit hit and miss. I'm actually going to go Everton nil, Bournemouth 1. So might make it a little bit more interesting at the bottom of the table. Yeah, Everton going to be one of those teams interesting to watch next season because the pressure will be on Ancelotti, I think, when he's got a full build-up to a season. Yeah. Leicester against Manchester United. Now, this is the game, I suppose, of the weekend for most people. Keith, we'll come to you on this one. Um, are they going to do it, United? Can they go there and get the three points? Because Leicester, out of all the teams in the division, appear to have gone to pieces. Yeah, they, they have since the restart. Leicester, um, you know, have, have, have been quite poor. Um, they were poor against uh, Spurs the other day. Uh, but in saying that, Man United, the last three games uh, haven't been great. They were poor against Chelsea. They weren't great last night again. Um, they got a result at pa Palace and they weren't great. So, you know, all this about, you know, as, as the tide turned, you know, because they'd gone through 19 games unbeaten, I think... You know, it's a little bit false because they haven't been playing that great. Um, defensively, they've been quite poor. But I, I, I do think they, they, they might get a result. I've gone for um, Leicester 1, Man United 2. And of course, Manchester United uh, not under pressure to get uh, more than a point. So that's in their favour as well. Uh, Jerry, your thoughts on the United game? I agree with Keith. Um, Brendan Rodgers, I know he had the COVID and I wonder, does that have an effect on him when he came back afterwards? Because they started really slowly, but very inconsistent, rely heavily on, on Jimmy Vardy. And, um, you know, that's one of the things he wants to score goals because he wants to finish top of the league. So, you know, maybe Jimmy Vardy to score, but Leicester to lose 2-1. Man United, Bruno Fernandes, Greenwood, great player, scored uh, again. Great goal the other night uh, against West Ham. Martial, I just think they've got too many good players going forward. So I've gone for Leicester 1, Manchester United 2. Strangest game I saw all season was that Leicester Bournemouth game. Leicester won it up at our time. I went to bed thinking it'd be a cricket score. Woke up, they got beat 4 1. Yeah. Speaking of cricket scores, yeah. Jerry, City Norwich, <laughs> do we need a calculator for this one? No, just the four. Just four the four. The Man City. <laughs> Eddie, Jesus, Eddie, Bruyne, you know, they've got yeah. so many good players. Eddie, it, it, it's got to be Manchester City. Any advances on four, Keith? Do I hear a higher bid than four down the road there in Bangor? <laughs> yeah, I've actually, uh, I've actually gone for six. Six? Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, they've, they've got incredible players there at Man yeah. City. Um, you know, you, you sort of look what they have on the bench as well and can come on. You know, it depends what sort of side Guardiola puts out to be in the last yeah. game and you know, they've obviously got Champions League coming up against Real Madrid. So, um, I've just gone for the six, uh, but you never know. It actually could be more than that. OK, well, we've got David Silva's send-off there as well after a decade at City. What a player he's been. Newcastle, Liverpool, one of your former clubs, Keith. So, we'll give you first dibs here. Is it going to be Steve Bruce's yeah, last game um, in charge? Yeah, I mean, he, he, I think Steve Bruce has done, has done a, a, you know, a good job this season. 
you know, he hasn't got the greatest squad and I, I think he's done as well as he can. Yeah. Um, you know, they've been comfortable for a while, free from sort of a relegation battle. Um, they haven't been great to watch at times, uh, but when you don't have the personnel, that's what happens. But uh, I think New, uh, Liverpool will be too strong for them. Uh, I'm going to go Newcastle 1, Liverpool 3. OK, 3-1, three, Jerry. Oh, have we lost Jerry? Oh, we've lost Jerry. That's such a shame. Keith, I'll stick with you because we've still got you. I'll come back to Jerry if we can get him reconnected. Uh, Southampton, Sheffield United, uh, Keith. Yeah, um, you know, Southampton have been absolutely fantastic of late. Um, you know, since ever since they got beat 9-0, um, fair play to the owners because it could have been very easy just to, you know, sack the manager. But, um, you know, I've seen them against Man United uh, um, at Old Trafford a few weeks ago and, you know, they, they were the better team by far. Um, so I think they've uh, they've done very well. And, you know, I think everybody knows how how well Chris Wilder's done this season. But I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw. OK, 1-1 draw there. And West Ham Villa, Battle of the Claret and Blues. A Villa, it will be some escape pact if they pull this off. Yeah, well, you know, it, it was a fantastic result for them against... Um, Arsenal the other night. Um, I I just don't see enough goals in 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 the, in the Villa sides, you know. And if 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 Ast or if West Ham's to score, you know who's gonna who's gonna get the goals for think uh, for um, for Villa. So I'm actually gonna go two one for for West Ham. Um, so I'm not sure how that would leave the uh, leave the bottom of the table with with me predicting Bournemouth if those results come come through. All right, listen, Keith, you've been wonderful. Thanks for your time. I, th I don't know if we've got Jerry back, but before I say goodbye to you, I apologise yeah. apologize not for giving you advance warning about this, but it's come into my mind as an interesting question to ask. Tell me now what position Leeds finish in the Premier League next season. Um, yeah, I, I, I think they'll, uh, they'll, they'll be comfortable. I don't think they'll get relegated. I, th okay. I think if they finish round about 12, 13th, you know that okay. uh, that would that would be a good season because I think uh, when you do get promoted, the biggest thing to do is try and consolidate and stay up. You know, it doesn't matter if you finish seventeenth, as long as you stay up and consolidate, then you can really kick on that next season. Great stuff. Listen, Keith, you've been wonderful. Please stay safe. Love from Singapore to you and all your family. We hope to catch you soon on the Legend Show. That's Keith Gillespie signing off from Bangor in Northern Ireland. And just up the road from Keith, delighted to see we've got Jerry back. Jerry, you're back with us. We thought we'd lost you. We were about to send out well, a search you party. Me, but I've returned. It's a return to the Jerry or a return to the Jerry. Uh, we need you to turn the phone round, Jerry. Turn the phone round because I think we've gone portrait landscape. Can you give us a, a spin round? That's it. You, you, yeah, there we go. I thought that was one of you. I thought you were doing one of your yoga exercises there. You were like side on. Listen, we got. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll do it later. Go ahead. We got three predictions we're missing from you. The Newcastle Liverpool game. I've gone two two for that. Two, um, two. Liverpool won last night, but conceding goals as well. And I think Newcastle at home will want to finish on a high. Sam um, so I've gone two two for Newcastle Liverpool. Southampton Sheffield United. Yeah, Southampton at home been excellent and. Um, I've gone for Southampton to beat Sheffield United 2-1. Sheffield United's had a good season as well, obviously, but no Southampton to win that one home advantage. And West Ham Villa? West Ham, what a great run they've had. They had some great football. Antonio's on fire. Declan Rice, what a good player that Sarri's fly. Well, he, he's an Irish family, but he's nominated to play for England now. Um, great player, Ackerman in midfield. So uh, I fancy West Ham a wee bit, but I've gone Villa need points, so I've got to go for a 1-1 one, one draw. OK, going to be interesting. They always say that the last games of the season tend to go to the form book and teams get what they need. Didn't happen in the Championship uh, in the week, though, did it? And one other question, yeah. one other question that I threw at Keith as well. Apologies if I didn't give you advance warning on this one. What position do Leeds finish in the Premier League next season? Well, I've supported Leeds since I was six or seven years of age and I scored my first goal for Spurs against Leeds in the league. Um, but I think they've done fantastically well. They've got uh, a great coach in Marcelo Bielsa. Um, they're not a bad squad. I'm going to have them finishing in uh, maybe 10th, 11th, mid-table. Mid mid they'll be mid-table uh, and they'll feel their way and uh, hopefully they're going to sign some players. 
I'm worried about West Bromwich Albion, though, who got promoted as well last night. Um, they haven't got a strong squad. They're going to need to sign four or five players for me. Yeah, they still seem to be in that yo-yo mentality, a bit like Norwich, perhaps. Jerry, as always, you've been an absolute gentleman and a scholar. Love to Debbie and your wonderful family. Stay safe like Keith there in Northern Ireland. We hope we see you again in Singapore sooner rather than later because we need to get you down that exchange bar, one of the sponsors. They need a visit from Jerry Armstrong. Oh Great stuff. Totally, get me over anytime. We will do, Jerry. Take care. All the best. Jerry Armstrong, Keith Gillespie, making up a fabulous first episode of The Legend Show. And, of course, we had other legends on the show as well. All of our Legends Club members. We've got Ravi, Philip, Jason, Cece and Mark. Just some of the members... Uh, club members that got to ask a question here on the Legends Club. Keep it tuned to One Play Sports and indeed the Legends Club. All these great benefits just for 15 US dollars a year. You've got a chance to win all expenses paid trips to a CEPL games with a legend. You've got 200 exclusive member meet and greets in your home country, wherever you're watching across the Asian region. Home chat with the legends via Zoom. This is obviously on our television show here, but there will be special home Zoom sessions set up. 10% discount on WFL selected food and beverage partners, and you get $10 off WFL merchandise as well. 15 US dollars a year. That is cheap at twice the price. Thanks once more to Keith and Jerry. Thanks to all our members for zooming in and you stay safe wherever you're watching in the world during these tough times. And we'll find out very shortly, if any, if Jerry and Keith's predictions are right. Stay safe, we'll see you soon.